The McElroy brothers are not experts, and their advice should never be followed. Travis insists he's a sexpert, but if there's a degree on his wall, I haven't seen it. Also, this show isn't for kids, which I mention only so the babies out there will know how cool they are for listening. What's up, you cool baby? Here come the McElroys. We've got jokes and bits. We're going to give advice and do funny skits. Laughter it is in store. Come inside and see. It's time to start. It's my brother, my brother and me. Hey, everybody. Welcome to my brother, my brother, me, an advice show for the modern era. I'm your oldest brother, Justin McElroy. I'm your middlest brother, old spotty dog, Travis McElroy. I'm your sweet baby brother, Griffin McElroy. It kind of fucked me up that you said hey and not hello, which is- Yeah, I've never said hey. It felt casual. I felt It felt like we were uh, on Twitch or some, something more casual than- Like a TGI Fridays. Hey, guys. Yeah. Hey, guys. Hey guys. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Yeah. Um, I, I've been working on some songs okay. during oh. quarantine and I finished one up just recently All and right. I wanted to see what you guys thought. Now, what kind of songs are you talking about? Like what genre? What kind of song it's just it? one song. It's just one song. But you said plural. I mean, you said Do you plural. Play, does it play an instrument? No, there's no instruments on it. It's, um, acapella. Okay. Is okay. it? Okay. Can I sing it? And please don't interrupt me or anything while I'm singing it. Okay. okay. Um, and it's yeah. just a song. How will we know when the song's over and we can start talking? There is there is like one whole rest. So if it goes longer than a whole rest, okay. Then, okay. 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 Here's the song. And your brother should never know that you're eating chili while you record. No, that's a secret you'll take to your grave. No, your brothers will never know all the beef and beans you're shoving in your gourd. They'd prefer it if you would just behave. It is Thursday at 2.41 p.m. And this is happening in real life. Huh. On the cilantro sprinkled across the bowl that was chopped up recently by your wife. Okay. What do you guys think so far? That's verse one. Now, oh, it's not, there's more to it than that? That's just the beginning. I wanted to stop for notes. Now, let me say this. Uh-huh. It's 2.41 p.m. now. Yeah. It's 2.42. <laughs> according to well, the clock at this point. That's not my point, Justin. I think what you were hoping or maybe anticipating here was that we would be upset that you're eating chili during recording. I'm upset that you're eating lunch and it was 3 p.m. Okay, well, it is just a... I feel like I clarified it, but the getting is just a song. It's a song, Trap. It's just a song. Well, it's... It's like the it's like confessional stand up. It doesn't always. It's not describing what's happening right now. Um, it could be a recording that he did, you know, a couple months back at two forty one p.m. Now two forty two p.m. on yeah, Thursday. But there were a lot of specifics in there, Griffin. And you, at one point, you, I believe he said, "This is happening right now." Right, but that's in the that was. Did you hear that? That was part of the song. Yeah. We've done this 560 episodes. We've done it 560 times. So, like, odds are we have recorded on a Thursday at 2.41, now 2.42 p.m. Can I just, can I just continue? Yeah, yeah sorry. Yeah. Thank you. Go ahead. And the spoon is literally in my hand. Me, Justin McElroy, the person singing this song. And it's not just a song. It's a story about me eating chili while I record the show. My brother, my brother, and me this episode right now. Now that scene, okay, Griffin, you have to admit that that seems <laughs> suspicious, right? It could have descri- it could have described any episode. He, he said this episode right now. It's when he's singing it. It's just a song. No, oh. you said in there that it's not just a song, Justin. <laughs> no, okay, but that was in the song. Who are you going to believe, Travis? Our brother or the song? <laughs> I believe our brother. No, okay, no, this. Uh, th- no, this song, he says just in the song. song. It's not just a song. You said in the song that it's not just a song. But I said in the song, if the song's just a song, you can't pick and choose what different parts you're going to listen to. Uh, you know what? Yeah. You're right. I, I can't decide you believe the part where I say it's not just a song. No, Justin, I believe all of it. 
This is the yeah. thing. I believe all of it from start to finish that you currently have a spoon in your hand, that you're eating chili, that your wife put cilantro on, that you're eating it right now as we record this Travis. episode. Trav. It's you're killing me, dude. It's just a song. And I would sign an affidavit with my legal name in front of a notary <laughs> saying I am eating chili. But it will not come to that because my brothers will believe me when I say that this is just a song, even though it's not. Now, oh, I was ready to buy in until that very last, oh, that very last kickflip there. What was different? What did you what not part like? Was it different? Did, is it because it didn't rhyme? I no, was struggling with that. No, I'm fine with free verse. It's more that right there at the end you said it's not a song again. Still not germane, though. <laughs> but it's very clearly not a song. Like, if O.J. Simpson put out a song like, I definitely did it, people would get suspicious. You realize that, right? Yeah. Mm. That's, that's. Mm. I mean, he did put out a book that was kind of like that. Yeah. And he wasn't mm. like, it was just a book. <laughs> hey, guys, it's just a book. Weird coinkydink. I, I ate leftover chili. For lunch, what does that have to do with me? Right before, well, because that was the nature of the song. I'm not saying that that's what you did. Oh, thank you. Okay, good. Um, but I washed it down with a um, a probiotic soda that Rachel brought into our house. For some reason, it was it was a chunky soda, and so my body's gonna make something new. What are you guys doing to yourself? I had a fruit smoothie for breakfast, and then I had a nice salad. What's wrong okay. with you two? I had uh, some turkey and uh, celery mm. and hummus. And then yeah, I chili. had some. I actually, I had a quinoa bowl, Trav, from Panera Bread. So I don't know what you're talking about. That thing I just said about the probiotic soda and the chili was a poem. No, it From wasn't. Robert, it was Robert Frost's. Oh, poem I actually about I remember chili. that now that I know how you say it. Yeah. 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 Uh, <laughs> Excuse me? <laughs> my, my body dead ass feels quite bad. <laughs> <laughs> I'm um, actually weirdly pretty hungry because I meant to eat lunch before. Yeah. Uh I meant to eat lunch before we started recording, and now I'm, I'm going to be hungry for the whole show. Sure. I did recently do, not that I'm saying what you said is true, Justin, uh, but I did recently do a live stream game uh, in which 30 seconds before it began, my wife lovingly brought me a plate with two big pieces of pizza on it. Oh, God, Justin. And then I had to eat it on the stream by ducking down below camera level, taking oh, a couple nice. bites, chewing and eating, then raising back up. Now, Justin, do you want to make any more horrific? Hey, can we hold hold on just one second? Meat slapping sounds. Hold on, guys, guys, hold on one second. Sydney's coming in. No, yeah, no, it was delicious. Thank you. Yeah, the cilantro really, really helped. Okay. Uh, now, we'll Justin, just cut that. Yeah, that was now, a skit. Now, Justin, what's up? You just said. Tell now, him, Justin, it was a she skit. She said yes. I said what? You said the cilantro was good, and that was something? She suggested the line about cilantro. Yeah. They're a comedy writing team, and they're doing We're some basically sketches. a comedy writing team? Yeah. Justin? Yeah. I'm not going to rest until I crack this. Yeah. You I can want try you to, you whatever. Can't, you can't run from me, Justin. I will hunt you down like a dog, and I'll prove you ate that chili during this recording. <laughs> I don't think you ever will. Justin, I got a whole board set up on my wall already. I got strings running the, the only, things. Now, listen, I'm looking at your board via Skype. No, the that was just, a, that was just a poem. Is, I don't have a board, Justin. It was just dude, a poem. That, that was not a, it poem. wasn't a real board, yeah. Justin. <laughs> <laughs> Even if you did have a board, the only thing you could pin up there is that Justin repeatedly stated that he ate chili during the recording. Right. That's a bad board. Can we oh, I'm a... sorry. This has been a bit the whole time, Justin. I knew it was real and just a song at the same time. I don't even care. It was just a bit. Yeah. What about a question? You know what you get for the, You know what I deserve for that? What? A Bitcoin. Oh, I get it. <laughs> <laughs> Boy, I wish we got a coin for every bit we did. I think it'd go a, a, little, a little something <laughs> like this. <laughs> did I invent the term Bitcoin? You did. Bit? Just now. Did I coin? Did it. I coin? Did I coin Bitcoin Bit? 
it's just that you're taking so long to get. It's you get at me, really mad at time. me for interrupting you, but everyone knew where you were going thirty seconds before you said coin and Bitcoin, Bitcoin, coin. Anticipation. Okay. Now this first question is not one we normally do, but it was such. So it tickled my Are brain. you going to read it? I love it. No, you do you it. you should yeah. read it, but it's a good setup. Who is the best farmer in the world? You know how there's the best soccer player or basketballist in the world? Me. Who's the best farmer? Who has the most farmer stats? And that's from Gmail. And what I love about this question and what it makes me think is, this is not saying are there good farmers and bad farmers? Because yes, of course it's true. But is there a best farmer? Huh. Um, do you know how we, you know how you know who the best farmer is? How he's outstanding in his field. Well, okay, huh? That I didn't do huh. this question just to set that up, but it popped into my head. Hmm. All right, I liked it. Um, I would say whichever farm has the most crows. Oh, you the think crows? The crows have spoken. This farm is the is the best one. It's got the best corn or grapes or whatever. Whatever crows like to eat, probably corn. I think it's corn. Um, it's a, I mean, it's Mon, it's Mr. Monsanto. Mm, yeah, his, oh, I love that. In yeah. his many, in his many farms. What I like about this question too is it has a deeper implication that yeah. like every every job there is a best at it, right? Sure. Mm. Like that there is out there somewhere the world's best sanitation worker that can like pick up a garbage can and kind of do this scoop move that launches the bags 30 yards into the truck without having to walk over there, right? That everyone's yeah. like, oh, they're the best, right? Like that has to exist. There is a ticket taker somewhere that rips it right in the middle every time. You know what right. I mean? Like there has to be a best, someone has to be the best at it. Yeah, um, and I feel like that's a, a dream that we all chase is being the best in whatever field we're enthusiastic about. I feel like for a sanitation worker, it would be the robot arm that lifts up the, the can and mm. dunks it in and doesn't lose like a you know a pizza box over the side or something like that. Yeah, like maybe they MVP were right there. They were in the military. They did one of those bomb exploding robots, and so they got good garbage arm training for that. Um, and now I'm like, now I'm writing a fucking Tom Clancy novel in our podcast. And I do apologize for that. Is it's there something the that you it. guys think you're the best at in the world? Yeah, best of the world. Oh. Like when everybody looks at the leaderboard right there at the top, you got Mo saying the name of Justin McRoy or Griffin McRoy. Hmm. No. <laughs> wow. That's that's a deep dark. Nope. nope. Nothing. Nope. Nothing. Nope. I'm the best at not remembering to get a napkin or paper towel when I get my food at a restaurant. Oh yeah, no, I've said that. I said that about you before. Great, every time. I come back to the table with our food and you guys are like, where's the, where's the napkins? And I'm like, I did not get those. And then you always say to me, you're the best at that. You're the best at that. You're, so you're consistent. the best at not getting those. Um, that's probably that's probably up there for me. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Not the worst. I mean, there's less thing I'm not the worst at. You don't think there's anything you're not the worst at? Because I would say not. I, I'm, I'm not saying that about you. I think it's way easier to be the worst at something. Oh sure. You know, like no, because you get to a base level where just lack of any experience is a, is a great leveler. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like. You could say we're stock trader and you're going to hit a point of the population where like, don't know, never looked into it, do not know about it, don't know what it is. And that's like a, a wide swath. Like, you couldn't be the worst just because of your ignorance. Yeah. There could be one worst. I actually have bad news about this best farmer question. What's that? Well, I was thinking about it and how it's like all family farms and it's like all like huge the family farms over. And it's all just these big corpo farms. Oh, yeah. Now, oh, you know? yeah. yeah. Oh, and then yeah. I started looking into it a, a little more. And here's what they don't want you to know, guys. What's that? There are no more farmers. Oh. Yeah. We actually don't have farmers anymore in America. A lot of it comes from China. And a lot of it comes from robotically run food farms. Yeah. That are, but there's no farmers anymore. If you're listening to this and you think that you're a farmer, 
someone's running a long grift on you because we don't have them anymore. Now, what about mm. farmers oh, only, Justin? That's why that crashed in the oh, dot com that's bubble. Why? Pets dot com. I lost my fucking shirt. Yeah, when farmers only went under. It Luckily, I, I had Christian Mingle there to kind of keep me afloat. Oh, damn. I'm more of a plenty of fish guy, but yeah. Um, hey, can I do a Yahoo? Yeah, I'd like that, Griff. Thank you. Um, this one was sent in by Amy. Thanks, Amy. It's Yahoo Answers user Ray who asks, how do you become the guy who controls the family dinner table? Ooh. Like in the show Boardwalk Empire, Nucky Thompson? Is that, <laughs> I don't that know if that's be it. a typo. I'm Nucky. It was Nucky. Welcome to- That this can't is, be it. Uh, time for, time for I'm me. I'm assuming this is on some sort of like- Boardwalk Empire centric sub Yahoo, because that is the only place that that program would be summoned up for polite discussion. No, it's that, entertainment. I, without even knowing the rest of the question, Tony Soprano should be the reference, right? Not Nucky Thompson. It's Nucky Thompson. I'm Nucky. Thanks for enjoying the meatloaf today. Nucky, can I ask a question? No. <laughs> You can't. I'm um, uh, in the show Boardwalk Empire. Nucky Thompson is always the guy with the cool stories and stuff to say <laughs> at big family parties. I'd love to be like that. Mm. Huh? How, how do you become the guy who controls the family dinner table? Now, hold on, though, because the question isn't yeah. about like the person at the head of the table who everyone like looks to. It's not a locational. It's not yeah. a, a, like based on orientation. Like, but I mean, that's got to contribute to it somewhat, right? Well, like, if you want to be the story person, though, you want to be in the middle of the table. You want to be because yeah. you want to just look slightly to your left and right to be able to see everybody. Yeah, mm. I love that. Also, big hands, bigger the better. You think big, big hands, hands helps you be because everyone is kind of quietly, subconsciously threatened by you or why the big hands oh no help? sorry I meant big hand movements not just like large hands oh he gesticulates oh, okay I thought you were saying large physical hands and then I was like maybe that's why they call him Nucky Thompson because <laughs> his knuckles his knuckles are so ginormous large hands does contribute well to large hand movements though because you have to do a lot less work to just yeah. like now you've moved seven inches you know it's just because yeah. the hands are so big it doesn't take much <sighs> Does being the source of the food help you help you sort of seize the the day here? Like if Does they're eating like, you? No. Well, that would certainly be a topic of like a real starter. You know what I mean? Like, if, damn, oh, if they're like serving sushi off of you, you mean? Oh no, I thought you were saying like we're eating Nucky's forearm today, and you would kind of have to talk to Nucky about. Well, kind that. of both of those things, right? Like kind of both. Because yeah, if, if you're, you're eating, eating sushi, sushi and you're just way yeah. too hungry, and you get into it, <laughs> and you're like, yeah. "Oh God, I'm so sorry." Why didn't when you say something? When they do the sushi eat off a person's body, what's the etiquette for going for the stuff, the the pieces on the privacy area? That has to be less. You can't eat them first. Yeah. I think hundred percent nipples. I think that that's a straight. I think I feel like when you pick up a little hamachi off the nipple, and then you find out the nipples under there, you can plead ignorance a bit and just be yeah, like, "I didn't, I didn't think the nipple would be." I would put there. it back. By the way, I, if I did that, I lived oh, you out, can't I saw do it, that. I guess with the with the sushi. No, back if somebody up. saw you pick it up and put it back, the party would be over. You would be oh, uninvited man. from all future nude sushi parties. <laughs> Um, I would let people eat sushi off my body if I was fully clothed. If I was mm -hmm. like wearing a suit, I put sushi on my sushi suit. I feel like being, I feel like it's just whoever is the most proactive, whoever sort of starts the conversations and guides it, right? And it's yeah. less about power and strength and being naked and having sushi on your body. But those you don't have to wrestle that away from from anybody. Yeah. I'll tell you who's good at dominating conversations. It's Justin. So Ooh, I'm, I'm yeah. going to show you guys. Justin's going to do a little uh, practical example here for you. Griffin yeah. and I will have a conversation, and Justin's going to come in and nucky all over it. Okay, you ready? Yes. Yeah, okay, so, okay, okay, okay. Trav, did you watch the uh, Blues game last night? I did. Uh, those yeah, Coyotes they, are really giving them the runaround, yeah, huh? Yeah, but they did some great scoring and shooting, and I like yeah. the way that one of them iced another one. 
Yeah, but, I mean, Bennington's doing his best out there, but unless that defense solidifies, it's, they're they're not going to be able to keep it out of their zone, you know? Yeah, and I was amazed at how many triple dekes they got away with. You know what I mean? Yeah, they, those they are the flying now, feet too. the new hockey rules because of COVID regulations. There's a slap shot. It looks like yeah. Justin's trying to say something. Justin, Justin uh, are you trying to say something? Oh, so you finally ran out of steam. See, this is the secret. You hang back. Ah. Uh. And you let everybody okay. else um, burn so out. So anyways, yeah, no, the and Blues you game was great. stand up and you take control oh, of God. the table. You've had your shot. All the sushi fell we off. Don't stand up. Don't stand up. Oh. Don't, stand up. Don't you talk over me. Don't you talk over. I smash them all in your head. Roll. Uh, roll dexterity okay. saving throw. Uh, I got a 17 plus three at 20. Okay. <laughs> you effortlessly duck out of the way. Uh, I attack. <laughs> I attack Nucky. Oh, hell okay. yeah. Get him. Fuck him up. Uh, <laughs> that's a 15 plus 2, a 17. Does that beat your AC? Did you use pure silver? Uh, yes, of course. <laughs> I'm not a noob. <laughs> yes, I am defeated. <laughs> okay. That's one That's one way to do it. Yeah. <laughs> I guess. I haven't watched enough Boardwalk Empire to be really useful No, here. that's basically how it goes. I guess. There, there was a lot of D&D &D influence on that show. There was also, the, it felt like a little Peaky Blinders in there, Justin. Was there just a little Peaky Blinders? Um... I don't. Are that, those two different? Are those less. two different shows? Uh, it's it's like um, a spinoff. Boardwalk Empire and then Boardwalk Empire colon Peaky Blinders. Okay, I see. I can, I got another way to control the dinner table, the family dinner table. So why don't you two start? Um, okay, okay, talking about something. Hey, Justin, did you see that new episode of Boardwalk Empire? Uh, no, that hasn't been on for a really long time. Um, no, they they just started making more of them. I don't think that that's actually accurate. Uh, yeah, Tom Welling's in it. Hey, get this. When I was recording my brother, my brother. <laughs> Sorry guys, I got a phone call. Sorry guys, I got a phone call. Yeah, no, it's me. Yeah, I can talk. So yeah, yeah, we're having um, dinner. But can you? Sorry, sorry, one second. Can you guys please just, just give me? Can you please just give me a? Uh, this is really important. Can okay. you please just we'll give just me a talk second? We'll no, talk no, no, no. Just don't talk. Just don't talk. Thank you. I'm back. Thankfully, we know sign language. Uh huh. When I was recording my brother, my brother and me earlier this week, I was eating chili during it. I fucking it. knew it. And I, what? I fucking knew yeah. it. Yeah. Yeah. I. <laughs> well, this is just in the context of a bit. Well, tell, we'll tell him when 2024 so runs around. Like, we'll, we'll talk about a run no, then. Yeah, no, no. I'm, I'm okay. Murphy. Give my okay. love to, to, to Dennis Kucinich. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, <laughs> Yeah, yeah. Thanks. Bye. That was my. F it's another phone call. Sorry, guys. You're blown up again, huh? <laughs> <laughs> Your real phone calls. That was when I'm uh, gonna be Dennis Kucinich's campaign manager in 2024. Oh, um, nice. Wow. Now, do I know who that is, or is it just a name that I pulled from the void? That is my. Is it my deeply mom. problematic? Is he? I don't. I literally mm. don't know. Is he alive? I don't know. I don't know. Can I show one more way to kind of dominate? Yeah, yeah I would love that. So good so far. Let's, okay, let's you two, you two have the conversation. Okay. okay. Hey, thanks for having my back on the chili thing earlier, Griff. Um, really yeah, it was it. my pleasure. I would do anything. Uh, hey, him. I will be turning in the coupon that you two gave me for my birthday for one half hour of uninterrupted monologue by me. And I will now be completely recapping the plot of the Brendan Fraser movie, Blast from the Past. Yeah. Ahem. You see, it all began when Christopher Walken's character feared that there was going to be a nuclear attack. So he built a bunker in his basement. That bunker, it looked a lot like a house, except underground. And there was Why Ray's- Why is he talking like this? A young Brendan Fraser. And then he became old and he was sent up to the surface. Like, we just used our regular voices, he but Travis is doing his weird. Alicia Silverstone. British affectation. And I believe again. Dave Foley. It's funny. I think if he knew the plot well enough, he'd go faster, right? Yeah. And then it turned out that because Brendan Fraser had been raised with 1950s and 60s ideals, Everyone loved him, right. a thing which is demonstrably untrue true in, in today's days. society. Um, let's do the money zone, maybe, while yeah, he continues to recap. I'd love that. Hey, yeah. thanks. I'd love that. Okay.
We all shop online for stuff, shoes, for instance. What else? Uh, what else? Uh, sandals. What else? Um, Can you give me six more? Uh, boots, uh, Crocs, galoshes, and shoes, and sneakers. Yeah, um, that's six. So you see that promo code field at checkout, and you're like, is there a way I could save money and not spend as much money? And the answer is honey, which rhymes with money, which is the mnemonic device I use for it. It's a free browser extension. And whenever you buy something that has one of those little coupon code fields, it, sca- it scans the internet. It releases its little burr, its little sparrows. Or bees. It's little bees you're into the- fucking asshole. <laughs> it releases its bees out into the- to the internet and into everybody's phones looking for looking for coupon codes who's got the coupon codes who's got the coupon codes and then it, the bees come back and then honey tells you and it's like here's 30 free dollars so that's that's amazing it's literally it's everybody should be doing it it's free it installs in just a few seconds and you can get honey for free at joinhoney.com slash brother that's joinhoney.com slash brother have you guys ever eaten food for sustenance? No, let me do this ad. Okay. How good is Sunbasket? Very good. Sunbasket is a meal delivery service that has a wild variety of options for you to get into. Uh, no matter how you're eating or what you like to eat, I uh, truly believe that they are going to have a meal to suit your needs and, more importantly, your desires. Oh, getting a meal on the table quickly doesn't mean you have to sacrifice nutrition or quality. With Sun Basket, you can actually have it all every single day. So they have um, the meal kit stuff, and the, there's a huge variety of those. Uh, what I love that I've just recently gotten into, they have these fresh and ready meals. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. They're $8.99, and they come, and you basically like heat them up, and it's like a gourmet meal that you're just like instantly enjoying. They have a chili. Oh, yes. Uh, that I just tried huh. today, actually, earlier today. Oh, and boy. it was so delicious. Earlier oh, today, God. very recently, but earlier in this day we were in. Um, and it was so delicious that I couldn't stop eating it no matter what. And I would do uh-huh. anything, anything yeah. for, to keep eating for it, more of it no matter what the cost okay. or the podcast, whatever uh-huh. was going on in my life. Yeah, um, even if it meant like losing a relationship with one of your brothers. Yeah, I don't remember exactly, Trav, but it, it was a very strong desire to keep eating the chili. I do remember that. Right now, Sunbasket is offering $35 off your order when you go right now to sunbasket.com slash my brother and enter promo code my brother at checkout. That's sunbasket.com slash my brother and enter promo code my brother at checkout for $35 off your order sunbasket.com slash my brother and enter promo code my brother and i'll go ahead and read the tagline here sunbasket let our chili take its dark hold on you huh i'm judge john hodgman and i'm bailiff jesse thorne 10 years ago i came on jordan jesse go and judged my first dispute is chili a soup it's a stew obviously The judge has dispensed a decade of justice. He's the one person wise enough to answer the really important questions. Like, should you hire a mime to perform at your own funeral? After they cry, I want them to laugh. Do you really need a tank full of jellyfish in your den? They smell like living creatures decaying. (laughs) Only if they are decaying. Yeah, which they will be. Real people, real justice, real comedy. Winner of the Webby Award for Best Comedy Podcast. The Judge John Hodgman Podcast, every Wednesday on MaximumFun.org. How about another question? We're going to help somebody else. Okay. We're doing better. Do the I've been a... I've been a huge Tom Hanks fan for years and Mm -hmm. currently have a steady girlfriend. Recently, we've been watching movies and I recommended the 2000 Tom Hanks classic, Castaway. But when I brought up the film, she refused. She said she thought Tom Hanks was overrated and had no desire to watch the film, claiming it's too long and probably sad. Yes and yes. (laughs) How do I convince her to watch this Thomas classic? Which I'm sure she would thank me later for getting her to watch. Mm. From stranded in Stratton, PA. There's different categories of films of 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 this type. I feel like where there's films that are culturally important 
Mm-hmm. And then there are films that are like, if you want to know what the whole hand on a volleyball thing is, you ne- you got to watch Castaway. Like you have to do your due diligence and spend two hours watching Tom Hanks, you know, cut his teeth out with roller with uh, ice skates. Um, oh right, uh-huh. uh huh, yeah. And and that's the price that you pay. Now I have a lot of films like this. Whenever people quote. Casablanca, I nod my head along. Oh, yes, yes, yes. A classic gray film. I do not know. <laughs> I have not seen this film. And so there are parts that it could patch up some of my my lack of cultural knowledge there. But I've decided that my time is better spent elsewhere. And that's what mm. your girlfriend has done. And, you know, that's that's what the Internet's for. You Google what's up with the volleyball hand. Now I know. I don't have to watch the film. You know, you make a good point, Griffin. We, we've entered a new uh, period in time. This is 2021, Big Dog Grin. And perhaps now's the time when someone's like, you haven't seen Casablanca? You have to watch it. And you just go, no, I don't. Yeah. <laughs> Do you know how many other things there are within my reach at any given time yeah. that I could choose to do? Yeah, it's, um, it's, it's liberating in a way. I will never I will never watch a Criterion collection film. And I just I've ne- I that's a huge weight off being able to say that out loud in such a public place. But that's there it is. It's out there now. Um I, I, I it's wild to me that that movie exists, isn't it? That seems like Hollywood was like people seem to really like Tom Hanks. Mm-hmm. We should just do just Maybe just have him. A one-hander. Oh, yeah, like a movie where he's having a good time and living nope, his bad best time. Life. Bad time. Oh. We destroy Tom Hanks for all of America to Look, enjoy. I want to I hurt Tom Hanks. And I'm a movie executive, and this is my pitch. I want to hurt Tom Hanks and see what I'm happens. I want to hurt Tom Hanks for two hours and 24 minutes. Did you guys see The Money Pit? Every time yeah. that Tom Hanks falls in a hole or gets electrocuted or you know wastes money on this bad house... That was good for me. And I would like a film that is just about that, about Tom Hanks being the, hurt over and over again. There was a period of time that I think, here's my theory, there was a period of time where everyone really enjoyed watching Tom Hanks get hurt. Yeah. Like the Burbs and Money Pit. And then I think the natural culmination of that period was Cast was Away. Cast Away. And I think after that, everyone went, I don't like this anymore. <laughs> I feel bad now that we've done this to Tom Hanks. Can he enter the period of time where the worst thing that happens to him is he's trapped in an airport terminal? Thank yeah. you, please. The worst thing that happens to him is he has to go back to community college, I think. I how, never saw that one. How long has it been since you guys watched Castaway, the film Castaway? Well, when did it come out? 2000? So I would say about 21 years. Yeah. Yeah, I would yeah. estimate Quick. it's around there. Quick spoilies, just because I feel like we're kind of missing it. Spoilies for just a minute on Castaway. He does get off the island. Do you guys remember that when he got off the island, his girlfriend married and had a kid and they had a funeral for him before? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Justin. (laughs) What a picture that is. Yeah, 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 yeah. What a picture. Do you think Bobby Zemeckis is like, "My my, my dream is to hang out on an island with Tom Hanks and just me and my friend Tom, and we're just getting buck wild on it and loving it. And yeah. that's what my dream is. Can everyone I, uh, do that? Can we also remember that the the big positive ending, though, is don't worry, he still has that one package to deliver. So everything's not all bad for old Tommy Hanks. Can everyone, real quick, do their best impression of Tom Hanks' character in the Polar Express? <laughs> Just saying, like, just saying, it. like, where's your now, ticket? The, Say, like, where's I your ticket, I haven't seen please? it, but I'm going to do my best, okay? okay? Well, where's your ticket? I'm Thomas Hanks. It's, like blah, 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 blah. it's more like, my ah, ticket, please. Ah, nah. nah, ticket. I need to see your ticket, see? Yeah, nah. see? <laughs> nah. All right, I'll try. I need to see, I need to see your ticket. Hey, Tom Hanks is a hey. hard impression to do, huh? Yeah, he just sounds like everybody. <laughs> just kind of sounds like Tom Hanks is the default. <laughs> All other impressions are in relation to how Tom Hanks uh, sounds. Well, do, do, uh, do Woody. Okay. What? Do there's a snake no, in my No, not that boot. line. Do uh, another no, line okay. from Toy Story that Woody says. You are a toy. Whoa! Hey, Trav. That was that was actually really, Trav. Really really thank you. On the good. podcast. <laughs> hey, Rachel. Can we get it again? You are a toy. 
It was really good, Travis. It's good. It's like actually pretty good, Travis. Hey, thank you. Thank you very much. That, you been I, hiding your I'm, light under a bush. No, I'm never going to try it again. Yeah, you <laughs> that can't. Was, that was right off the hip. Can't. Yeah, you can't that do it. Nobody again. ever asked Travis to do it again. He'll buckle. He'll, he'll do a really shit job the next time because he. We got that magic moment on tape. I'm so happy. In that moment, I was Tom Hanks. You guy. like yeah. I saw his face overlap my face for a moment. Um, can I do a Yahoo? Yeah, yeah. please. This one is sent in by uh, Graham Roebuck. Thanks, Graham. It's an anonymous Yahoo Answers user who I'm going to call um, Dan asks, is there a special taste bud for chicken wings? Mm -hmm. I like to position the foods in my mouth to taste them according to the taste bud that tastes best for that food. Is there one for hot wings? Mm -hmm. I've recently learned that the taste bud map of your tongue is apocryphal. And this was well, heartbreaking. Really? To me. Yeah. I thought it was a thing. No, nah, they're all mixed in with each other, except for the chicken wing taste bud, okay. which is that dangly thing in the back of your throat. Oh, that's the chicken wing taste bud. It's the dangly that's, thing that dangles yeah. down. Huh. So if you want to get the most out of your chicken wings, you got to shove it back there and See, rub it against that dangly thing. I always thought that was a sort of, um, I, I, I always called it the throatum. Because it was like mm -hmm. a it, the throatum is unpleasant. No, but you know in WAP when she says, "I want gag, I want to choke, I want it to touch that dangly thing in the back of my throat." Yeah, mm -hmm. that's what it is. That's, yeah, that's what my it chicken because she, she couldn't say my chicken wing taste bud, my no, one big would, one. Mm, yeah, no, that's but a, that's why if you just hold the chicken wing on the tip of your tongue, nothing. You can't even. It's like there's nothing there. Yeah, that's interesting. But once, Trump. As it slides whole down your gullet. You get all the flavor profile there. Maybe cry a little bit out of joy. Do you guys not want to derail? But do you guys know what? The, do you guys know what the radio edit of WAP is? No. The radio edit of WAP, and I just want to take a quick poll. The radio edit of WAP is not wet ass pussy. Uh, it is in fact wet. It's wet and gushy. Oh, yeah, yeah. No, it's hey, worse. Hey, it's worse, right? Like, it's the radio edit is worse on that one. Yeah. The, it, it falls into a category uh, that, that another one there is, uh, there is a, a song by the Ying Yang Twins, and the real line is, we all like to see ass and titties. And then this the sucks. radio edit is, we all like to see tiggle bitties, which I would argue is far more offensive. Yeah, yeah hugely challenging. A hugely challenging thing. Yeah. Till the sweat drops down the walls. Okay, we got it. Sure. Although it does, wet and gushy is good because then it lets her rhyme the next line where she's like, have you seen my tushy? <laughs> <laughs> Which is in the original Indeed. song and it's sort of a slant rhyme. With the, Release the, the tapes reason. about gushy. Yeah. Yeah. Is There's not a special taste bud for chicken wings. I wish what? that there was though. I wish we could hack our tongues. The right chicken wing engage, engages all the buds. Yeah. You know? Okay. The right chicken wing has invites over his friend Spicy, but he let, makes him stand outside. And then this he is... him brings Sweet in, mm -hmm. but then sends him out. And then Sour is on Zoom uh -huh. nearby. Uh -huh. And now, Bitter is occasionally <laughs> welcomed. It's Bitter's house. But not actually. all at once, Justin? This is, you're making it sound like it's stages, like a Neapolitan well, that's how chicken you wing. you're really savoring it. Yeah. You're, yeah. Getting, you're getting the heat, and then you're getting a bit of sour. Do you know oh, how, Trav, when Justin eats chicken wings, he first dabs it on the tip of his tongue, which he has yes. stuck way, way out of his mouth, and then he oh, just yeah. kind of rubs it in a clockwise circle around his tongue yes. and lips. He also will swirl the chicken wing around and then sniff it deeply. Yeah, he says which that I've helped. always found troubling. Yeah, that so he says it helps him hit the flavor spot. And I don't yeah. I don't I, And he'll kind of like half moan like look at the legs. Yeah. You have to see it. But he fingers. doesn't he doesn't actually chew and eat it, which is weird. No. He sets it right back down. Mm. Yeah. Spits it right there in the bucket. Yeah, all naked wings that you ever eat in your entire life have been pre licked by me. That's true. That's weird, but it's true. And if they're a little bit crispy and naked, they've just been sitting out a long time. Yep, they've dried. Ham just dried. dried in the sun. Yeah. I've been eating a lot of chicken wings lately. Oh, tell me more. No. Okay. Uh, yeah, you know what? Here, I have uh, this for you. Oh. 
I want to munch. Squad. Squad. Jump up a bum 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 bum. I want to munch. Squad. Bum 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 bum. What I was trying to capture there was like the soul of winter that didn't have a holiday feel. Oh, see, I I was thinking I was feeling very very Georgian. Okay. Very uh sure. Yeah, not Victorian. This is but... Petersburg, Chekhov, yeah. Three Sixers, Uncle Vanya. Uh, we've never had you sort of just lay a lay a munch squad at our feet, which is what it feels I like you've this done. To you. I yeah. usually interrupt, right? Yeah. yeah. But I feel like as you get older, you don't always want to be saddled with the bad boy of podcasting. Yeah, yeah. sure. And I mean, you know, it's especially as this segment moves into it's it's denouement, right? It's, it's final, yeah. right. right? That's also the other thing is like this one is it's like okay, yeah, you know what I mean. And I don't want you guys to be like it's good of you to know that about yourself. Why did Justin? you interrupt it? Yeah, you know, what I mean? like sure, why sure. did you interrupt us for one that's okay? Pa- Panera bread. Do you do, you you guys heard this? Yes, I believe that translates to bread bread. If I'm not mistaken, mm. Panera bread did a um. God, it's really weird. You know how they have bread bowls? <laughs> yeah, uh, sure. Um, so they've made an ice and toasty bread bowl glove. Wait. Mm-hmm. Okay. So what the thing is with this is that it is a hand warmer that's also a cup holder. So you can drink iced coffee even when it's cold, and also it looks like a bread bowl. Now, okay, until you got to that last part, it's mm-hmm. just a glove. But then, huh? What's it? It's not made out of bread, uh, is it? No, that's the other thing about Fucking it. Is it's cowards. not. It's not made out of bread, right? So, like, why did you? Why did you do it, Panera Bread? You could have had. Some, oh my god! Think of how much money they could have saved on soup if they had started selling warmed like right there fr- fresh from the oven bread gloves that you would go into a panera bread jam a couple of these on your fist and they'd be like okay that'll be 14.99 and you're like i can't pay that look at my hands how am um, i how on earth am i supposed to pay that that could have been so nice and fun i sent you an image in slack so you can look at it okay it looks so wild it looks like your hand is like a Lego person's hand, yeah, uh-huh. made out of glo- uh, made out of bread. What it looks like to me is like, um, like a, there's some kind of bad guy in Doctor Who, where uh, it's like actual living dough that's trying to look like yeah. people. Okay, yeah, I love that, and that's like how you can identify. Like, look at their hands, just, Doctor. There's nothing about it where. You know how sometimes you put your iced coffee into your bread bowl. It's like you just combine <laughs> things that you had around. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like your iconography is getting fucking sloppy. Yeah. Like if somebody saw that, even if they thought, is that a real bread bowl? Their next thought would be, and are you using it to hold an iced coffee? What? I feel like you, you those okay? realizations would come the other way, Trav, where it would be like, why on God's green earth and Christ's earth it, do you have an iced coffee tucked into a bread bowl? And also, is that your hand in there? Yep. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. They did a, oh God, it makes me so angry. So they did this, right? Yeah. They made 450 of them. That's fucking it. Fucking thanks. Like, just have some fucking some strength of your convictions. Right. You know, like, if you believe people want it, you nasty pervert, then do it. Yeah. Right? Then just do it. You know what? Nothing can stop me from going into Panera Bread and ordering a empty, a, a, a bread bowl straight up. And cramming my little <laughs> and cramming my little paw in there is there? There's no. there ain't no log in it. There's nobody who's gonna no, they, say anything to me. They wouldn't take it back from you. No, I paid for it. You know. And in the release where they were talking about it, they said they cited a statistic that seventy eight percent of Americans told them Panera that they continue to drink iced coffee even in cold weather. Yeah. Okay. Then you're fixing a fucking solved problem. Yeah, we already got this. We've got it. We're just doing it and going yes, for it. Seventy-eight percent said they still drink iced coffee, and a hundred percent said they want to stick their little paws into one of our bread. Balls. I think anybody, when given that opportunity, w- 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 would leap at it. 
would jump to, hey, I got a hot bread here. You want to jam your hand in there? Are you going to eat that bread? It seems like a waste of food. No, nah, I'm not. This isn't. If you don't do it, I'm going to let somebody else do it. Oh, OK. Everybody would jam their hand in there. Everybody, everybody, everybody. Now, if the glove was fresh bread bowl sent in, forget about it. We're done. I'm I'm taking that all day, every day. Yeah. Uh, I wanted to thank Liam for this one, actually. Uh, so thank you, Liam. Uh, real quick, I did go ahead and go to go on over to icedandtoasty.com, yeah. uh-huh. which is weird that we didn't own that, but I did go to icedandtoasty.com, and there's just a big picture of the bowl, and then it says, sorry, we're all out. Oh, man. But then under it, there's a link that says, what does this mean? Oh. (laughs) 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 So I go to isodosy.com and there's a, it says, sorry, in huge letters, we're all out. What's that, what's that even mean? (laughs) What does this mean? (laughs) What do you even mean? Sorry, you're all out. If you click, what does this mean? It then gives a really wordy explanation that breaks down to, we don't have any more. We don't have any more of them. It's, I clicked it. Here's what it says. This is from Zach. Well, it's probably Zach, isn't it? Well, Zach, Z-A-C-H. and then he's doing the, the rock horn emoji. Yeah. You may receive this message if all of the products in your area have been claimed or you're participating after the promotional period has ended. So in other words, they're all out. <laughs> they don't have it. Well, and then down at the bottom, then, then says 11 out of 23 found this helpful, which means that there were 12 people who are like, I'm still confused. I don't, I don't, I don't get it. How does this help me get a bread bowl glove? Explain it again, Zach, but slower. Anyway, you can't get it. I don't know why I wasted your time. It's a dumb idea. When Liam sent it, Liam said, it's an edible Panera bread cup holder. That's not right. Well, but it's also right in the sense that, like, why the fuck else are they doing it? If they made an edible cup holder that's like, we baked in a slot for your hand because we're absolutely out of a solitary fuck to give, then I'm into it. Yeah. If you want to let me, like, hold an iced coffee and then finish it and then eat the thing out of my hand because it doesn't have a purpose anymore, that's biodegradable. That's 2021. You know what I mean? That's new tech. I think we've talked about it on this show before, but edible doesn't mean digestible. Liam's not wrong. Yeah. You could eat that glove if you tried hard enough. I'm just saying if they wanted to rebrand as Panera's Boutique and they only sold bread clothes, I think that would be a killer swap Oh, yeah. What else do you guys want to do? I mean, I'll talk, we, talk, we do the questions. We only did one, uh, two, two, I guess. Two? Yeah. Two, which actually modern Bim Bam is not bad. But I will do another one if you want. Are you at yeah. Yahoo? I think the second question is powerful and we should read that. My employer offers a small stipend for purchase of clothing with the company's logo. Most of it is pretty bland. Polo shirts, light jackets, caps, etc. This year, though, they're offering jeans with the company logo embroidered across the ass. What occasions are appropriate for business casual juicy jeans? Mm-hmm. How should I complete the outfit to really impress our clients? Dress to impress in DC. An unbuttoned white thin fabric shirt <laughs> and there's a fan yeah. and there's a fan close by. Uh, That's also, a, you could do a popped collar jean jacket of the same denim material. Yeah, and, and s- make sure you always have your back turned to them, and you're looking over a shoulder. And make sure you tuck that jacket into the pants just to yes. really complete the look. That's good, Trav. If you can find denim shoes. I don't know if that's anything, but anything that draws attention back to the ass. Let me call John John Mellencamp and ask to borrow one of his many pairs of denim shoes. Hold on. Okay. I'll get on, I'll get him on the horn. Okay. This is not a skit I'm going to do because I don't really know anything oh, about man. John Mellencamp. But I, I, uh, I feel like a great use of this would be if you're doing a presentation. Oh. And you're like to a new client and then it's like you use it as the punchline of the presentation because it makes it look like you went the extra mile. Mm. You know what I mean? Like it's like and one thing I can say about Fidelity Capital Management, we won't be bringing up the rear. (laughs) That's really good. And And you show them your ass and it's like this this company gets it. That's it. it. And and then they'll be like, why do your jeans uh, look so dirty and smell so bad? And you're like, I don't. I do not take these off. 
because I love my <laughs> I, I love I live, I love I love the company. You heard the part where I talked about loving the company, right? So like why would I take off my fidelity pants? You could do um another pair of jeans over those jeans. And then when someone's like, I can't believe you wore jeans to work, you're like, yeah, sorry, I forgot. Uh, it's a little too casual. And then you tear those pants away. Yeah. And underneath, you have your business juicy jeans. And everyone's like, that's what I talk about, bro. And you all high five a bunch. Uh, and then maybe play some volleyball out in, in the lawn. In your I jeans. Assume. Just some jeans yeah. volleyball like you do. <laughs> some jeans volleyball. The chafing is part of the fun. It's part, yeah. It's an endurance sport, ch- jeans volleyball. Why did they make these? <laughs> what do you mean? Why did they? It's actually really kind of weird, isn't it? That they. It's kind of weird that they would think you would want to put the company's logo right on your ass. Yeah. No, it's not a good place for f- for that. I guess it depends on what the company is. Is there a company where, other than Juicy, do you work at Juicy Corporate Headquarters? What about endoscopy cameras? Like, if you were like. Is that the right one? Colonoscopy. That's what I meant. If you were making like, uh, okay. if if you were a company that produced enemas, okay, colonoscopy kit, or just like a billboard company, and then like it, it said like has it there and is like you looked in you, and this yeah. is what you're trying to sell now is hi, my name is Travis McRoy, and for a hundred dollars a month you can buy ad space on my ass. That's it. Does oh, jeans, it's for sale. Does jeans, but advertising work just did because you looked <laughs> out, right? made my, you, you look. looked at my Heiner, didn't you yeah are you looking for a house with a great backyard and then it has like the listing for you know some real estate agents in there right yeah. but it's on my ass because i have a great backyard yeah but next bucky's exit 23a and 15 yeah. miles but it says it follow me right to follow me to bucky's and it says it right there it's got basically map quest directions to Bucky's on my dumper. Yeah. Yep, yep, yep. Yep, yep, yep. Now, the, we, this started as a joke, but now I'm starting to think yeah, I could maybe sell some ad space on my butt. I think okay, anybody I'm gonna could. Make, I want to give you guys a challenge. Okay. Are you guys okay. ready for this? Yeah. This is a thought experiment for thought leaders like ourselves. Okay. It, if we had to put up a piece of McElroy Family merchandise where it was jeans, but the logo was on the ass. Uh-huh. What would you What would you guys do? We have to do it. Well, would we advertise on the back? Um, or what, what would, would it the, be? What just yeah, describe the product, I guess. Um, I probably put an ad for pets dot com on there, but I think it's because you mentioned the dot com bubble earlier. Yeah, mm. yeah. And my brain went there could too. My brain was so that would be a piece of McElroy family merch that we would sell. Uh huh. Yeah. That would be the pets dot com logo. Yes. Yeah, something like okay, that. Okay, so you've already I- hearing it back, parroted back at you. Yeah, 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 yeah. Mine would be like tr- uh, truth campaign, but not their anti vaping thing they're on now, but like old truth, do- uh, old yeah. truth, and back in like two thousand one, where it's like, yeah. uh, check out th- uh, this person and the machine they used to talk. But we put that on their butt of yeah. uh, merch pants. I think I would advertise the pants on the pants so that when people look at the pants, they're like, well, now I want to get those pants, but I don't know where to get them. It's like, well, the information's right there. Yeah. You can get ad ad pants right there. I like that, where it's like <laughs> the pants are an ad for your ass branding company. Right. Ass branding limited, let's call it. And the logo is a pair of jeans that have the ass branding limited word mark on them. Right. Which happens to be shaped like a pair of jeans. Correct. You know, so it's just uh, infinite into your Jeans butt. all the way down, baby. It's jeans all the way down. You need a kit. Yeah, that, but the good news is if you go too deep, Joseph Gordon Levitt will kick your chair into the bathtub. Yeah. Kick you yep. right back up. <laughs> right out the jeans. <laughs> Joseph Gordon Levitt, that chair kicked into the tub. Right, kicked me right out my jeans. <laughs> Keep me on my jeans, JGO. <laughs> Thanks for saving for my jeans. I just, where's, wait, 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 wait. Where's my top? <laughs> wait, I'm hold my on. Shirt that I wore with the jeans, JGL. Damn. Are you wearing those jeans? Were you wearing those jeans when I went in? Are we still oh, in? No. Oh no! <laughs> oh no! Kick it! My kick wife is again. trapped in some jeans. Kick me again, JGL. Damn! I'm in, I'm in my wife's childhood jeans. <laughs> <laughs> My wife created jeans for us to live in together. <laughs> but it was between our two jeans. Uh, let me sp- oh, no. Let me spin my magic top. Oh, damn it. I left it in my jeans one layer up. <laughs> Fuck. 
Hey, Tom Hardy, hey, bring Tom my Hardy jeans kicks. now when you come. Bring the, or at least my magic top. It's in the pocket of my jeans in your <laughs> jeans layer. Hey, I just want to tell you, guy who's super old now, your jeans still look great. You still wear the hell so out fresh. of them jeans. I believe you mean Ken Watanabe. You said the, the name. Extremely old man. Yes, yes, yes. Ken yes, Watanabe. Yes. Wait, Elliot Page. Way to spoil. Way to spoil. Yeah, way to spoil it. Elliot Page, everyone. I need you to craft some jeans for me with your own. No, the jeans are paying attention to themselves. <laughs> <laughs> the jeans are aware we're in them. I'm a jeans architect. You're a tailor? No. I've said that many times. <laughs> Michael Caine, young and old Michael Caine. Oh, this must be a dream. We're all three in jeans and kissing. Sydney made fun of me today for falling over in the snow. And I said, why do we fall, Master Bruce? It's to get back up again. And my voice started sounding like Bane. Yeah. And I accidentally, and I did Michael Bane. Michael Bane. <laughs> He's like a Michael Caine and a Bane impression mixed together. Mr. Wayne. Mr. Wayne, tell me this wants to watch the world, Mr. Wayne. <laughs> it sounds like he's drowning now. It does. <laughs> <laughs> Henry, uh, Henry loves Batman, and one time I had him say, where's Falcone, as deep voice Batman, and now he says it any time he plays Batman, and I feel like I've ruined him. I feel like nothing will satisfy him now. It's, Where is Falcone? Yeah. He has to, and then he's like, who is Falcone and why does Batman want him? And I have to tell him it's uh, because he didn't pay attention in virtual school. <laughs> you think that's bad? My daughter said Baba Booey to me this week. Oh, that's <laughs> oh, no. Thanks that for hurts. listening. Thanks for listening to our podcast. We're three great dads. <laughs> and we're happy to have you here. We hope you're hanging in there as much as could be expected. Um, if you want to uh, 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 buy some merchandise, why we don't have you? any jeans on offer currently, but if you go to McElroy Merch, you'll find some other stuff. There's a cute little boy car pen by Zachary Sterling. Uh, our Candle Nights uh, special, you can now uh, get that. We got a Taste of Luxury stemless wine glass and a t-shirt designed by Ooh. Kevin Budnick. Um, if you haven't watched that, by the way, search Taste of Luxury on, on YouTube and watch it. I really it's real funny. It. I'm so proud of it. Yeah. Speaking of watching things, we got an Adventure Zone live virtual show this week, February 19th at 9 p.m. Eastern Time. It's virtual and interactive. That Ooh. means there will come moments when we'll need your help deciding what the players do. Uh, we're going to be playing Honey Heist with special guest Erica Ishii. Tickets are just $10. You can get them at live.themacroid.family. It's going to be a blast and a half, folks. And hey, pre-order Crystal Kingdom. The, th the third? Fourth? Fourth. Jesus. Fourth. We've written a lot of books. Uh, graphic novel in the Adventure Zone uh, Balance series. It's real good. Go to the AdventureZoneComic.com. Book comes out July 13th, 2021, but don't wait. Y'all want a final Yahoo? Yes, Absolutely. please. This final Yahoo was sent in by the wizard Ben Cant. Thank you, Ben. It is Yahoo Answers user T who asks, how comes bad guys in movies don't eat an apple with a pocket knife no more? Yes, <laughs> thank you. <laughs> My name is Justin McElroy. I'm Travis McElroy. I'm Griffin McElroy. This has been my brother, my brother, me. Kiss your dad. School. Wear on the lips. Okay, that was the show. Hope you had some fun. Talked for an hour and now our job is done. Go back into the world. Face the day ahead. Please don't tell our grandparents all the cuss words we said. MaximumFun.org. Comedy and culture. Artist owned. Audience supported. Hey, it's Jesse. What you're about to hear is real. Hey, this is Chris. Hi, Chris. It's Jesse calling for Maximum Fun. Hey, Jesse. I heard that you got into a car accident. <laughs> yeah, I was listening to Stop Podcasting Yourself, and I just laughed so hard that I uh, slammed into a construction barrier. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> <laughs> you remember what it was that was so funny? I will never forget, I'm sure. They started talking about Vegas and the, you know, if it happens here, it stays here and that slogan. And then Graham was talking about, oh, you know, wasn't there some other slogan for another commercial? Oh, it was like a commercial for food and it said like, whatever's in there stays in there. I can't remember what it was, clams or something. <laughs> 
<laughs> Clam? <laughs> Just so ridiculous. And man, I got lightheaded. I was laughing so hard. <laughs> Next thing I know, <laughs> smash. <laughs> yeah. They are they are just brilliantly funny. So I talked to Dave and Graham from Stop Podcasting Yourself. We would like to pay your car repair bill. Is that okay? That I mean, that would be super nice, Jesse. I really uh, thank you. I appreciate that. 